every technology that's really impacted the world has started with people really fearing it. And I think people have been, you know, worried about AI for a long time. But more recently, since we've gotten AI systems that are able to converse with us in very human seeming natural language, that just drives that fear even more because it seems so powerful when something is talking to us in our own language. And I think we tend to project sort of our own fears onto that system. And I worry that the fear of AI is going to drive regulators and legislators to close it down, to make it less transparent. That will, in the long run, actually be more harmful because transparency and the ability of everybody's eyes to be on this technology will make it more safe, I believe, and more beneficial in the long run. You know, we don't understand intelligence all that well, but one thing we know about biological intelligence is that it's a very social phenomenon. Joshua Bengio gave a thought experiment where he says, well, what if we have a super intelligent AI and we ask it to solve climate change? And it says, well, okay, humans are the ones who are producing all the carbon. So if we just kill off all the humans, climate change will be solved. And so that's been called the fallacy of dumb super intelligence. It's super intelligent, but it's too dumb to like take into account that that's not what you meant, which was to make the earth a better place for humans. That's not something that we see in any intelligent entity on Earth because a lot of our most intelligent aspects, including language, really evolved for a social purpose. That insight into other people's mind and insight into like the effects of one's own actions is a key part of intelligence. So I think that's the sort of fallacy that you could have a super intelligent AI in which you could insert goals it would then monomaniacally pursue those goals without any concern about anything else. I'm not at all convinced that that is a possible scenario. When the term artificial intelligence was coined back in the 1950s, people thought they understood intelligence pretty well. But it turned out that every time people tried to capture intelligence, it turned out to be more complicated than they really thought. Back in the 1970s, when people were trying to get computers to play chess, it was like chess, like that's one of the most challenging intellectual fields that we have, right? So IBM built this machine called Deep Blue and it was able to beat Kasparov, the world champion chess player at the time, but it wasn't what we thought of as intelligent. It wasn't a step towards more general intelligence. All it could do was play chess. Now there's a famous paradox in AI called Moravec's paradox. And he said, what's surprising is that things that are incredibly hard for humans, like playing chess or translating between languages, you know, things that we consider to take a lot of intelligence, turn out to be easier for machines than the things that we do without thinking of them as intelligent, like looking out at the world and just describing what we see or you know, being able to walk across a crowded sidewalk without bumping into anyone. So the fear about these AI systems sort of waking up and having their own desires and perhaps even threatening people because they want more power, that's just not where we are right now with AI or even I think anywhere in the, the, the foreseeable future. So what are the near-term benefits from AI? Well, there's a lot of them. For instance, understanding and predicting the structure of proteins for medical diagnosis, for weather prediction, for climate modeling, all kinds of applications in science, I think, are going to be revolutionized by AI. And I don't think AI systems are going to replace doctors or radiologists or pathologists. I think it's going to end up augmenting people in jobs, but we have to get it to be more trustworthy. And that will only happen if these systems remain relatively open. The fears that we have need to be sort of calibrated by the evidence for those fears. 
And if the fears are just rooted only in ungrounded speculation, it's important not to stop doing things that might produce a lot of benefits because of those ungrounded fears.